numbers are pretty staggering when you realize it's, it's 356 billion coupons were issued. When you try to wrap your mind around that number, you realize that almost 15 to 20% of that is fraud. And if you can cut that back, that is magic. Welcome to Hedera Hashgraphs, gossip about gossip. If you are a developer, an entrepreneur, crypto enthusiast, or just trying to learn more about how distributed ledger technology and Hedera Hashgraph will impact your industry, then you'll love the episodes that we have coming up. Bookmark us, add us to your podcast app, and stay tuned. Hey there, and welcome to Hedera Hashgraph, gossip about gossip. I'm Paul Madsen. It's been a while since I've recorded a podcast episode, but I'm going to be happy to be back. How's it going, Cooper? It's good. How are you, Paul? Very good. So, Cooper, did you ever watch a show called Extreme Couponing? It was a reality show some number of years ago. Oh, I, th I think I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it. So, we're going to be talking about Extreme Couponing, but not the show. Uh, real coupons and a real use case with Extreme TPS, hopefully. We're happy to have Jay Johnson from the Coupon Bureau. Jay's the CTO there. Welcome, Jay. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. So did you, did you mind my reference to the, uh, the TV show? Not at all. That, is, that was one of the shows that shined a huge spotlight on the industry. Everybody knew there was a little bit of a problem, but nobody knew exactly how severe it was until that show came out. And I think it caught everybody off guard and uh, it ramped up the problems of fraud in our industry. Ah, that's, that's, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that, you know, that show was, was manifesting a, a deeper problem. So yeah, let's, let's come back to that. Tell us about the coupon bureau. Well, the coupon bureau, it's uh, we, we were actually, this has been kind of a long journey for us. It's about 10 years. And about 10 years ago, we started a, we saw a need in the, in the grocery industry for a coupon provider that was able to do coupons in Facebook or into a website or, or we were hoping to do mobile at that time, but really anywhere that you, that a coupon could live, we wanted to be able to create one. And uh, even in places where they didn't live originally, at that time you could not do couponing inside of Facebook, you could only do it on affiliate sites. Uh, we broke the standard on that, worked with Facebook, uh, created the first manufacturer's coupon inside of uh, Facebook. And then we were able to, from there, really launch it into a platform. Uh, it was the industry's first SaaS-based system. And so it really allowed a manufacturer to go in, create a coupon. It'd be live within five minutes. That was a huge problem in our industry. At that time, it was 10 to 15 days before you would see any, before you could even launch a coupon. Like if you had to send in the artwork, you had to do everything manually. And by the time it went live, it was anywhere from 10 to 15 days. We felt like that, that uh, the market needed something that was quick, responsive, being able to change on the fly. And so we built that. Uh, it was founded by three couples at that time. And we are all still together, uh, all still with the same people after 10 years of a startup. And, you know, we didn't kill each other. So that was a, that was a, that was a huge plus. About five, four years ago, we, uh, I was asked technology, I'm a technology geek. And so I was asked to look into a problem that the industry had. At that time, everything was, you know, you could, you could buy your coffee at Starbucks, you could, on your phone, you could check in at, at a airport on your phone, check in at a hotel on your phone. There's so many different things that you could do with your mobile device. But the, this industry was pretty archaic. Uh, they're behind the, they were behind the times 10 to 15 years. And so we, they asked me to come in from a technology standpoint and just listen in to conversations and see if there was something that we could provide and uh, if there was something that could be done. We, shortly after that, we, we uh, did some demo work, tested a few uh, kind of prototypes, realized that we could do this mobily, but the only way that it could do it was doing it with some sort of central database or central data exchange. And that's where the Coupon Bureau was formed. It was a long process. It was created by the industry. They mandated certain things that they had to do and then issued an RFP and we actually won the RFP. So from there, it has been head down and charging forward since then. So that is the Coupon Bureau. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to hear you and uh, Brandy are still married. I don't know. <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> I don't know if I'm as brave to, to work with my wife. So uh, a database, what's in that database? 
Yeah, it, it, it's pretty simple. Whenever, whenever a uh, coupon is created, I, I was ignorant to the coupons, the coupon industry for, for so many years. And I just, just looked at the, the piece of paper that I got and scanned it. I never thought about how it was reconciled, how it was validated, how it was settled. There was none of that stuff that really was visible to me as a consumer. It is or it was one of the only industries where there was a legal tender that was issued that is unregulated. And so you wouldn't want unregulation at a bank or a stock exchange or anywhere else. And we couldn't understand why you would want it in the, in the grocery industry. And so a manufacturer will put all of their you know, pertinent details there that, you know, the, how much is off the legal text, all of the good stuff that, you know, that you see on a coupon. But then there's a lot of stuff behind it. And the fraud was so rampant in this industry. You know, we have, uh, I won't give any names out, but there's, there's one retailer that, that literally floats about a million dollars a day in coupon fraud, or not coupon fraud, a million dollars a day in coupon settlement. And they don't get their settlement back for 30 to 45 days. They're a negative cash flow of 30 to 45 million any given time that, that you look at it. So that we felt like there was ways to speed that up. Fraud. If you photocopy the, you know, many cases, you could photocopy a printed home coupon or print multiples of them, take them into the store and redeem them. And, and, and they always get stuck in front of me in, in line. It never fails. If I'm at the grocery store, the woman in front of me has got 30 coupons. And, you know, then they have to call for price check and it just slows everything down. And um, we felt like at that time we could speed up the process, the lane time, the ease give the marketers and the manufacturers a better place to distribute coupons in aisle. Like if you're in the store and you pass something and want more information on it, being able to get a coupon right then and redeem it right then. That was something that has never, was never done in this industry. We worked for the first three years on really the political side of it, making sure that every stakeholder had a voice. Every stakeholder didn't change their, you know, what they were doing, their job that, that they already had, their pre-existing jobs. And we wanted to just make it to where it accommodated everybody, but it did it on a level playing field and gave everybody the same type of access. That is, you know, so when, whenever those things are stored in there, you're looking at the price, the legal, the, you know, who it gets mailed to, what products is it good for? Uh, and that could be 50 products that it's good for that are all stored in that database. And so when a coupon is scanned uh, now from your mobile phone, when you scan a coupon, it actually is going to ping to that, to that database, ask if it is a legitimate coupon and has it been redeemed. If those two questions come back, yes, it is a valid coupon and no, it hasn't been redeemed, then we will proceed with the process of validating that coupon. In doing that, there's, it, it basically becomes a more secure couponing experience. Uh, you can only buy certain products that, are, that the manufacturer wants you to, but by cutting out that fraud, it increases the value of coupons. So now where you see people doing 50 cent coupons, they may want to do $1.50 or $2 coupons because the fraud has been taken out of it. And uh, so they have a better experience, they have a better consumer experience. In doing that, it just gives them a little bit more credibility on the back end and more security on the back end. That's funny that you mentioned regulation. It sounds like coupons might actually be less regulated than some cryptocurrencies and, and you know networks that are out there. I would not have expected it that. <laughs> it very much is. Cryptocurrency is, is almost Fort Knox compared to couponing. So Jay, great. I think I understand you know, the life cycle of a coupon, but you said a centralized database. So what, what's Hedera's play here? How are we helping? Yes. So Hedera, they've been just amazing partners. They, they saw the vision of what we were doing. You know, we were sitting here, we, you know, we, we were a very small team, uh, but we felt like we were just screaming in the industry, guys, this is a huge problem. And it's a, it's a big industry. And not everybody saw it. We met with Mance and Ken uh, over, and, uh, and Azim. And when we sat down, they, were, they got it within the first five minutes. It's, it's not rocket science that, you know, the numbers are pretty staggering when you realize that it, coupons that are issued, there's in the industry, not, not last year, but the year before, because we don't have the reporting back from this year, or uh, last year, is, is 356 billion coupons were issued. When you try to wrap your, num your mind around that number, you, you realize that almost 15 to 20% of that is fraud. And if you can cut that back, that is magic. And so we showed that to Hedera and uh, we were introduced from a mutual, mutual friend 
And when we showed them, they got very excited about it because, you know, you guys are looking for transactions, as many transactions. And you think there's 356 billion transact potential transactions that are out there. It just created a perfect fit. Hedera provides the coupon bureau with just absolute transparency to the industry. You know, now anybody that's in the industry, any grocery store, any manufacturer, they could grow up their own mirror note if they wanted to on the distributed ledger. And being able to do that, it gives them accountability. They can look at any given time and see when their coupon was issued, which coupon was issued, who issued it, rather than relying on a central source like the coupon bureau to say, yeah, we, we, you know, we, we gave you credit on that. They don't even see it. And so Hedera just opened up this transparency layer that is on the front end as well as the back end. And they don't, Hedera doesn't do anything in the middle. That just because the distributed ledger technology is a little bit wonky in, in the way that we had to do that. And it, it, it didn't like address a few of the mandates. But what the nice thing was about it was is that it, that it gives us the transparency on the front end. And then, you know, we do our thing in the middle. In the, in the back end, it gives us a settlement record. So instead of waiting that 30 to 45 days, clearing houses or manufacturers or whoever, instead of shipping that paper, uh, across country and then, you know, recounting it and auditing and that sort of thing. It is actually, you know, Hedera has given us this digital file that anybody can access, anybody that, you know, registered can access that, get those numbers in either real time, batch them at the end of the night, monthly, weekly, however you, however you want it. But that information is there. It's just it's this beautiful, clean form that Hedera has provided for us. That 350 billion it's a great number. It's it's bigger than the number that <laughs> it is cited in the press. I I guarantee that any any time someone at Hedera hears a number like that, we immediately pull out the calculator app and work, <laughs> out, work exactly. out what the TPS is. It was interesting in our first meeting with Mance. He pulled out his he pulled out his calculator. He started running numbers on it. I knew we were, and he pulled out his phone calculator. I knew that he was pleased whenever he had to turn his calculator sideways to get to the number. And that was, you know, that's pretty much a, a good sign so, for all of us. And you mentioned 350 billion coupons a year that are registered. Is that kind of the main mechanism by which you're using Hedera is just for coupon registration? Or is it also, you know, kind of across the board where consumers would be able to see uh, if they wanted to, you know, potentially the coupons that they have used in the past or... Are there kind of additional use cases that you're looking at leveraging? Yeah, there are. And those would be probably in the future a little bit more than, than current. I think phase one is, you know, realistically just securing the and giving transparency to that front end, the registration of coupons, the housing of them, where they're distributed, how many were distributed, that sort of thing. And then on the back end, how many were redeemed? What is the running total number that you owe the, the, the uh, retailers and those sorts of things that are, that can be accessed now in the future yeah i would love it for maybe phase two or phase three to be able to a consumer to to, to look into that and see it from their side that that would be amazing if they could see you know additional coupons that were out there maybe tie into a, a loyalty program and if you're a if you're a member then you, you get an additional percentage off or something comparable yeah in, in this industry, uh, loyalty is, you know, grocery loyalty is, is the only way that you can do things on a mobile currently. And, you know, so many people thought that this was trying to take the place of loyalty. Uh, this really just enhances it. So the stores aren't going to stop their loyalty program. And so because of that, they, they, put this, they put this out there and they're like, okay, you're going to get a dollar off of ground meat, uh, ground beef. You're going to get X amount on your produce. You know, these are usually in-store deals. The Cokes, however many 12 packs of Cokes that, you know, for $10 or whatever. And then because we can do some, some AI in the background, not, not the coupon bureau, but providers and, and other manufacturers, they can say, okay, we see that you've got charcoal in there. We're going to give you something on lighter fluid, or uh, you have, you know, chips in there. We're going to give you a discount on dip. And being able to run that sort of AI uh, and, and kind of progressive, uh, you know, learnings that we could get from other consumers I think that that is a place that we could, that Hedera could play in the future. Totally makes sense. That sounds like a, you know, a variety of ways that you could expand this down uh, in the road. And I would definitely love to see some type of transparency into my coupon life cycle, if not just so that I can start competing with 
the folks that were on that extreme couponing show. Uh, I think that, that yeah. would be great. <laughs> what, one other question I was wondering is if you're doing real-time checkout, real-time coupon scanning, like you were talking about in the grocery store, and then almost immediate redemption, how important is something like Hedera's sense of finality? You know, within two to three seconds, you really know whether or not your, your transaction was successful. Oh, it's huge. Because of that, it, get, it does give us the security in the back end. There is no question. It takes in our previous life with the, with the, with the cupels, the, the coupon provider that we had, when we would push forward and say, okay, yeah, those, we've had 20% redemption. They would, you know, there was always this was like, uh, okay, we'll wait that six weeks and we'll, we'll see when it comes back. So now they're frozen. They don't know if that coupon did well enough to start a new campaign. Uh, they don't know if it, if it was rampant in fraud, they don't, they don't really know anything about it. Uh, so to have that finality, you know, we always say within the day, you know, I know it's real time, but they're not going to do it. They can't physically do anything with it real time. But, you know, within the day, having that information just gives them so much flexibility and security. Uh, the, the manufacturers, we have yet to talk to anybody that's playing like, man, we don't want to really play in that space. And, you know, when we show partners like Hedera and some of our other partners that are out there, they jump on it because they, they love the security. They love seeing it's, a, it's an industry initiative. Uh, we are a, a nonprofit. If, if you think about it, the, the, you know, in the past, being a coupon provider, we always tell people we were kind of like the bank uh, issuing coupons. We have now kind of become the FDIC, not to regulate everything, but to give it a secure place and to give it a, a place where everybody could play across the board safely and fairly. I think it's interesting that a, a consortia or alliance dedicated to couponing is relying on a, a consortia dedicated to trust, centralized <laughs> trust, right? Yeah, it's it, it's been like I said, it's been a it's been a great uh, marriage that we've had together. It's um, marrying the two companies, or not marrying them, but using the two companies and, and having a, a, a like vision. Uh, it it really has been exciting. Jay, awesome. Thanks so much for talking. Just for the record, yeah. I, I did the math and 350 billion <laughs> equates to 11,000 TPS, which is noteworthy because it's above our current throttle. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have right. to max that for you. Yes, Ken and Ken and, and Azeem have been working feverishly on that. And that's what gets them excited. It gets us excited as well. We're really happy about that. Awesome. We look forward to watching the Coupon Bureau, Bureau grow and, and the, the numbers grow accordingly. Thanks again, Jay. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. If you liked the episode, please subscribe, rate and review and also share and tell your friends. Or connect with us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Hashgraph. Particularly if you want to leave us feedback on the podcast. We look forward to hearing from you.